Edward Lawrence, Regional Extension Agent in Central Alabama, and we're going to talk briefly on brown rock control and peach production. If I can advance my slide. Okay, uh, so brown rock is caused by monolinea species, uh, most commonly here in the southeast, it's monolinea fruticula. And uh, it's one of the most commonly, or one of the most economically, economically damaging pathogens in peach production. And one of the reasons for that is uh, because it basically uh, is a threat to peach, to the peach all the way from bloom to harvest. And so when we're looking at controlling brown rot, we need to look at it as a season long management strategy. Um, so brown rot gets a lot of the publicity and the attention because as you can see the picture there on the left, how ugly that is, you spent all year producing this nice ripe fruit and then you get within a week of harvest and then two days later it looks like this. Um, but it also can affect um, a, bl a bloom, uh, we call that blossom blight. And then from those blossom blights, we get twig blight or canker, um, which we'll discuss briefly because like I said, we kind of need to look at controlling these, this blossom blight um, to help us prevent inoculum for brown rot later in the season. Um, the blossom blight, uh, flowers will wilt and turn brown. Uh, you'll see a, uh, this gummy substance oozing from the blossom. Um, and this produces inoculum for brown rot on mature fruit. So if you get this on one of your twigs in your tree, the rest of the fruit that are good uh, are susceptible to this, you know, getting these spores on them. Um, so we really got to focus on get, keeping our cover sprays out there. Um, on this picture, I just took a knife and this, you know, this disease isn't too far developed at this point, um, but took a knife and you can already see the canker on the stems. Um, and so typically this canker will uh, girdle the shoot and create tip dieback. Uh, these leaves will turn brown and everything from that point forward uh, will need to be pruned out because it will, like I said, produce an isolum for future infections. Um, you see the picture there, that is a mummy from the previous year. And so there we are um, already in the shuck split stage of development from this year. And there's still uh, mummies on the tree from last year. So those should have been knocked off. Um, I understand, you know, if you've got 100 acres of peach trees, it's hard to knock every one of those off. But uh, if at all possible, get those out of the field or get them off the tree, at least. No, not possible to get them out of the field, but at least knock them off the tree. Um, typically see this when we get into 70 to 78 degree temperatures. So in the springtime, when those temperatures start feeling good outside, that's when this disease is most prevalent. Um, in extended bloom periods, it's hard to keep cover sprays or preventative fungicide applications out there when we have prolonged bloom, bloom periods, uh, like most diseases, frequent rain, rain events, and then, like I said, mummies being present in the field. Okay, so brown rot. Uh, brown rot starts as a small round spot on fruit. Uh, it'll eventually cover the fruit, and usually it's fairly quick. Um, these, like the picture before, these mummies typically stay on the tree and uh, produce spores for future infections. They're spread by wind, rain, insects, and even harvesting. Um, you know, when we're walking through the field, it's tempting to reach up there. If you see one of these, grab it off and throw it on the ground, but then you're spreading that by the spores on your hand. Um, if nobody's ever seen this in person, you can walk up and just pretty much blow on one of these peaches and it's just a powder, it's just a fuzz. So uh, it easily spreads from fruit to fruit. Um, your fruit's more susceptible to brown rot injury. Um, these are all extreme examples, but um, I'm just, you know, if you see fruit that's this damaged, um, go ahead and knock it off because it will get brown rot more than likely. And then that's just gonna create more spores for infecting your healthy fruit. Um, just in case you're curious, going left to right, you got bird damage, um, you got cracking from expanding too rapidly, uh, bacterial spot, stink bugs. And then the far right is uh, what I believe is cold damage. Uh, it is uh, basically damaged from the inside out. And you can already see some brown rot or monolinea, green fruit rot on the bottom of that fruit. So preventing it, um, pruning. You know, pruning is essential for peach production and increases air movement, increases sunlight. Uh, we remove that diseased wood that is, you know, the inoculum for future infections. Um, removing those mummies. Uh, thinning, thinning is important. Um, and I, I put on there prior to pit hardening, uh, any thinning practice is typically done before pit hardening, but if that can, if it's done before pit hardening, the, the fruit pretty much lays on the ground and shrivels up and goes away. It won't develop brown rot. 
um, if it's after pit hardening, typically it'll lay there, produce brown rot. Um, site selection, uh, like any orchard, uh, anything, anytime you can get it up on a high elevation site with good air movement, the better off you're going to be. Uh, and then fungicides, we'll spend the next couple of slides looking at fungicides. Um, using an air blast sprayer, sprayer is pretty important. Um, air blast sprayer, besides having multiple tips, uh, the fan really blows that spray into that tree. Um, if you've never seen one, it's, it's a lot of wind, uh, it bends those branches back and really opens up that canopy where that spray can penetrate the canopy of that tree. Uh, high GPA, we typically spray at least 100 gallons to the acre. Uh, and then, like I said, the next few slides, we're going to talk about rotating fungicide groups. Um, these are some of the fungicides that we spray. Um, if you want to take a picture of this, I'm going to kind of go through it fast, but I have the in parentheses there with each product is the frat group. Um, main thing when we're looking at season long uh, fungicide program is we want to be sure to rotate these groups. Um, so this is going to be kind of a season long look at what your spray program could be. This is for a low to medium brown rot pressure. Uh, we want to start our sprays during bloom and those are some of the products that are available. Um, you know, you, you can swap these around just because I have it in bloom doesn't mean you can't spray it later in the season as long as it's not one of these at the bottom of the screen. Uh, Vanguard is not uh, not labeled after bloom, Rover is not labeled after petal fall, and Bravo is not labeled after shuck split. Um, but you can you can alternate some of these other ones if, you know, if they're not, if some of these aren't working for you, if you have resistance issues. Um, so we pretty much want to get at least one good bloom spray. Um, shuck split is a critical time for scab control as well. So I really like to spray Bravo during shuck split. Um, if this was a blank slate, the first thing I would come in here and write down is Bravo, and then I would build my program uh, after that. Um, I can is pretty much the industry standard for cover sprays during the summer. And then once we get into um, you know the two weeks before harvest, uh, 14 days and seven days, that's when we start rotating in some of those other fungicides. Uh, these here on the 14 day, those are all 7-11s. Um, those are probably the best option that we have for brine rot control. So I like to get those on there uh, about two weeks before harvest and then rotate to uh, something else. These are these are threes uh, and fire super is a nine and three. Um, we'll look at high brown rot pressure, come in and added another bloom spray. So we have two blooms, uh, a suck split, cover sprays, and then added in another pre-harvest um, basically just adding in tops and in with captan. Uh, it's always recommended to add tops and in with captan just to uh, reduce any uh, resistance issues. Uh, and then picking one of these 7-Elevens and then picking one of these uh, threes. Uh, it's important. Most of our fungicides have a zero day pre-harvest interval. Um, Inspire Super and Linen Sensation are the only two that have more than a zero day. So it's always important to pay attention to that since we're spraying around harvest time. Um, you know, I have one here 21, 14, and 7. That hardly ever happens. Uh, it's a good plan, but you deal with rain, you deal with harvesting, you deal with, um, you know, windy days. So, you know, it may be 10 days, it may be three days. You just need to try to at least get some of these sprays out um, before harvest. And then here's one I just made an example program. I selected some of these products. Um, if I was going to spray peaches, that's what I would do. And then so in bloom, pick Vanguard. It is not labeled after bloom. It's a group nine. And so that lets, if we don't use it here, we're not able to use it anywhere else. And so the same thing with Rover with Um, Group two, we're not, if we don't use it here at Petal Fall, we can't use it anywhere else. And so those are both really good products for uh, Blossom Blight. And we move into Bravo, which is, you know, it's good for uh, brown rot as well, but it's also really good for uh, scab. And then we spray cap tan and then getting our uh, topsin M, pristine, and Endar, which are all different different groups. Um, and then Scholar is a post-harvest application, uh, a dip. Um, most people don't do that, but I just listed it on here just so you can see, see it in a program. Uh, but, you know, here, here's a pretty good program. Uh, a lot of rotation. Um, I would say this is probably the best best effort for reducing resistance. Um, so in summary, um, just orchard maintenance, pruning, keeping your orchard clean is gonna help you. 
um, down the road when it gets when it gets time to get into harvest season. Um, killing insects to prevent, prevent entry, a lot of stink bugs or shark shooters, they, they break the skin. Um, you know, that having that damaged fruit uh, makes that fruit more susceptible to brown rot injury. Uh, and then fungicide, these are all preventative fungicides. These aren't, these aren't uh, uh, for controlling measures. These are all preventative. So be sure to rotate those and um, hopefully everyone have a good season. And I believe that is it for me. Uh, I know that was kind of fast. If anybody has any questions, there's my contact information. And thank you all so much.